Today I'm pulling out one of the old Johnny Carson tricks. I'm reading, I'm looking into the future. Who's staying and who's going from the 2023 Green Bay Packers offense? What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Lombardi Time Brews. I am your host, John Delray. Yes, as you can already hear off the right, right, right off the bat. Yeah, um, <clears throat> my son, the two-year-old, is sick again, which means my voice is all screwy. So I do indeed apologize for that. You could tell I got a lot of stuff going on. I'm gonna. We'll power through for you, and let's talk a little bit about the Green Bay Packers today. Now, as we know, it's Monday of, well, what's not really their bye week anymore. Packers are now back in town. Things are getting ramped back up as they prepare for one week from today, a uh, matchup against the Los Angeles Rams on Monday Night Football. But tonight, we know Razul Douglas, Eric Stokes, Jerry Alexander, they're all doing a Salvation Army signing in the Lambeau Atrium tonight. I am actually heading up there shortly, as soon as I'm done filming this, uh, to meet all of them tonight. But that's good proof that all the Packers are flying back in. We know that they are back in town, ready to get back to work following the bye week. So today... You know, in spite of that, we're coming back. We're still in this season. Packers still have got a chance for the playoffs, right? And this weekend did help in a number of ways. You know, we saw losses by key teams. One of the only teams from the NFC that won that hurt the Packers' playoff chances happened to be the Detroit Lions, who upset the Minnesota Vikings. So, of course, all of that still going on. We're still in the midst of this season. There's still a chance if the Packers win out, according to 538.com, that they have a 58% chance of making the playoffs if they win out. So, there's still good chances here, right? I mean, of course, the, the weight is all on the Packers. They've got to win out. They've got to take down the Rams, the Dolphins on Christmas, the Vikings, the Lions. They've got to win these Final Four. To really have any chance at all. So we're still very much in the heat of this season, but in spite of that, a number of people's eyes have turned towards 2023, especially given the fact that the big news headline of the day and the last couple days has been a report by Jason Wildey saying that if Jordan Love is still the backup next year or Aaron Rodgers returns, Expect that Jordan Love will request a trade. Now, I'm going to be talking about that more here later on in this episode. But the thing that I want to get out right in front of is that was Jason Wildey's opinion after a conversation with Jordan Love. In no way, shape, or form did Jordan Love himself say, I will be requesting a trade. If you go through and you read Wildey's entire article... You actually see that Love did not say that. He said that with an eye towards the future, he'll need to discuss things with his agent, decide what is best for him. Which, yes, any 24-year-old first-round quarterback should be doing on the regular basis anyway. So, will he put his guess following that conversation? And it has blown up to say Jordan Love unequivocally will request a trade. No. Nope. Not what it said. Not... Not what it said, and mm, mm, that's Wildy's opinion. Now, I'm going to get to what happens if Love does request a trade, etc., etc., here in just a little bit, but I wanted to clear that up first. Now, today, what I am going to be talking about is I'm talking about four Packers, because we are turning an eye towards the future. Four Packers on the offensive side of the ball who I believe will be returning next year. Three Packers on the offensive side of the ball who are not coming back next year. No way, no how, unequivocally will not be returning to the green and gold. And then I've got one. Now, again, these are just my guesses, but I've got one who, frankly, I don't know. It is a massive question mark to me. It is not Aaron Rodgers. It is not David Bakhtiari. It is not Jordan Love. It is a different, prominent, offensive member of the Green Bay Packers who I do not know if he will be returning next year. I just, I got no tea leaves to read. I just don't know that this is the way this is going to go. So let's start with the keeps. Let's start with the good news. Number one, 
Elton Jenkins. I mean, their left guard and extraordinaire guy who's played well at the tackle spots. You see his knee regaining more and more health. I know he's a free agent. He is going to cost a bundle. The Packers have no money. They have no money moving into next year. So how in the world could they possibly retain this premier offensive lineman? I don't know, but they will. I'm, t- I'm telling you that. I am certain with that. The 2023 picture is heavily, in terms of salary cap, dependent on a number of things. We do not possibly understand what that cap number is going to look like until Aaron Rodgers has made his decision about whether to come back or not as well as a multitude of other factors from other players. What we do know is that they have restructured Dean Lowey's contract. This happened a week ago. Got them an extra million dollars in cap space right now that they have not done anything with. And if his, if historical precedent matters, the Packers would do that mid-season, especially around the buy, because they've got an extension that they're willing to announce or a re-signing or something. Otherwise, what's the point in getting yourself that million dollars right now when you don't need it? What's the point in taking on more dead cap for Dean Lowry? Right? So we don't know, but it's very possible that this was Elton Jenkins or was Rashawn Gary. That an extension is still coming or then they're on the precipice of an extension and it fell apart. We don't know, but it could be Elton, could be Rashawn. Regardless, no matter what the cap picture looks like, I don't see them being willing to, to, to let a second-round pick from four years ago, a guy who is so versatile for them on the offensive line, one of their premier linemen, I just don't see them allowing him to walk out the door, even if that means sacrifices in other places, like maybe coming soon. So that's number one, Elton Jenkins. Number two, Randall Cobb. Now, Randall Cobb is 32 years old. I think if Aaron Rodgers returns, which I think he will, That Randall Cobb will be back. Regardless, though, I think the Packers are going to want Cobb back. Look, Amari Rodgers was Randall Cobb's backup. He was the heir to the slot throne, right? Well, he's gone. He's he's in Houston being more productive than he ever was in Green Bay in only one game. But he's making plays for the Texans. He's gone. Now who's your true slot? Sure, Alan Lazard could play in the slot. Sure. Between Romeo, Watson, and Toure, could you find a slot? Sure, but none of them are absolute true slots. Well, so what does that leave you? Well, if Randall Cobb is willing to come back on an affordable basis because he wants to keep doing this, even if Rodgers retires and he wants to come back, whatever, if you can get Randall Cobb back, that does solidify that spot for you. We've seen this year in his age 32 season, that man has spark. He has legs left. So, if they can, I think they will. Number three, Jordan Love. Now, again, there were all these requests or all these headlines about Jordan Love requesting a trade if Aaron Rodgers returns. I don't... If I'm the Green Bay Packers, that's cute. Like, you can request a trade all you want. For all we know, Aaron Rodgers did. And they just went, okay. You're not going anywhere. We have your contract. Sorry. You're staying put. You're a part of our plans. Right. I, you can't tell me that they invested a first-round pick and then three years, hopefully four, if Rodgers returns and everything, you know. I just I think they're viewing Jordan Love as this, he is still the heir to Aaron Rodgers. So... Why are we going to invest this time in him? Why are we going to do all of this just to let him request a trade? Like, no, Rodgers sat for three years. And Rodgers certainly had technical flaws coming out of college, but he was older. You could argue his game was more refined than the gunslinging Jordan Love, especially considering Love's last year in college. And he sat for three I don't think, even with Jordan Love's progress, but considering his entire first year, he missed all of that rookie mini camps, all of the development of his rookie year that he was supposed to have. And I know, I know, it's just not practical in today's NFL. It's also not practical in today's NFL to not have an owner, yet here we are. So if Jordan Love wants to request a trade, okay, fine. 
but you're not going anywhere. Because to me, he's still the heir apparent to Aaron Rodgers. And I believe the Packers still feel the same way. My guess, my total prediction for this, and I've been saying this for a while, is what's going to happen is Rodgers wants to come back for one more year next year, being the 23 season. But the conversation this offseason between the Packers, Aaron, and Jordan is, Aaron is coming back for 23. It will be his official and actual swan song. Jordan, we know you're pissed about that. However, you are guaranteed the starting job in year 5, 2024, as you're playing on the $20 million fifth year option. Just do it for one more year. Let Aaron have his final year, but this is a planned final year. We're not doing this year-to-year stuff anymore. Agreeable? That's the way that I see it going down. It's the way I've seen it for a while now. I just think that that's the most likely path moving forward for the Green Bay Packers. And in which case, if Jordan Love says to that, I hear what you're saying, I appreciate it, I don't trust that Aaron's going to retire when you're telling me he's going to retire, I don't like the situation, I don't want to sit in your four anymore, list, 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 I want to be gone. Then the Packers retort with, no. And here we are. Like The Packers are in control of how this plan works. And if that's what they want, then that's what's going to happen. Regardless, I think Jordan Love is on this team next year. No question about it in my mind. Last keep, Aaron Jones. Yes, I know all about his cap number. Next year, his cap number jumps all the way up to $20.2 million. Oh, $20.2 million for a running back. However, in 2024, his cap number actually goes down. It drops by $4 million, dropping from $20.2 to $16 million. Now, keep in mind that on the back end of that, there are already two void years attached on for cap purposes, but I don't know. I don't know. I kind of had the feeling coming into the year that like they were going to continue to develop Kylan Hill, and then when Aaron Jones' cap number jumps, they'd be able to move on from Aaron Jones, and here, A.J. Dillon and Kylan Hill, you now have the keys to the offense. You are the new pony package, but... Kylan Kylan Hill obviously isn't a part of that equation anymore. And I think Aaron Jones has just proven way too damn important to the offense this year. Way too important. He's not showing any signs of slowing down. So I think this is another one where the Packers look at this and say, okay, that 20.2 number, that is is completely, uh, we can't have that. That's a non-negotiable. But we need Aaron Jones for the sake of this offense. So, and then Russ Ball goes to work. I think Aaron Jones is kept. I know a lot of people do not agree with that. People who are familiar with the cap strongly disagree with me. But I'm, I just, I'm reading the tea leaves. I think he's too important. I think he sticks around. I think they find a way to make him stick around. Now, who are the three guys that are gone? Now, you may have noticed, I didn't say David Bakhtiari. I didn't say Aaron Rodgers. But... They're not on this list. Who are the three that are gone? To me, these are all very interesting. And it could go either way. Except for one I see is pretty pretty clear cut. But number one gone, Robert Tunyon. He's a free agent at the end of the year. We've seen this year he could still be productive, but it's not like he was. And part of that could be coming back from the ACL injury. We don't know. But nonetheless, I think the Packers have to move on at the tight end position. Regardless, I don't think Robert Tunyon is the guy that you once upon a time were banking on was going to be this playmaking tight end. You've got Deguara. Okay, you've got Tyler Davis. Then you got Mercedes Lewis and, 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 uh, and Robert Tunyon. But to me, Robert Tunyon is not going to be retained. I don't think he's going to be re-signed this season. I think it's time to move on, especially considering that this is one of the best tight end drafts that the NFL has seen in forever. Was I was just reading, uh, the name is failing me right now, but I was reading one of the major draft analysts for the draft industrial complex, and they were saying that this is the finest tight end draft that they've seen in years, that they've got seven candidates with either first or second round grades, which is monumental compared to what it's been in recent memory. I think this is the offseason where the Packers take a critical look at that position and say, what we have been doing is not working. Time to, time to change it. Time to beef it up. And so Tunyon goes. Number two, in close conjunction with Robert Tunyon, Mercedes Lewis. He already set his record 
for uh, longevity at tight end. He already set that NFL record. We know that that was a goal of his. He is a free agent after this year. He will be 39 years old next year. Yes, he is still blocking incredibly well. However, it's not as good as it's been. I have a very difficult time imagining him coming back again, especially at a $4 million salary or anything close to it. I just I just don't see it anymore. He does appear to me to be slowing down. He doesn't seem to have the same, I don't know, it's not that same spark when he catches the ball. It's not the same as it has been. And I know, mired in a losing season, how could it possibly be the same? But he already set the big NFL record that he was aiming to. He's going to be 39 next year. I just think his time may be complete in Green Bay, which is incredibly sad. I mean, he's the modern generation of Julius Peppers, right? Julius Peppers was an old, accomplished vet who came here basically to win a ring. And then we couldn't fulfill that for him. Mercedes Lewis has hung around to win a ring. And we haven't been able to do it for him. Last one, again, another free agent to be. This one, I think, is the most obvious to people. I don't think this will be surprising. Sammy Watkins. Yeah, he hasn't done enough, right? Now, the, the thing is, I could actually see the Packers saying, hey, come on back for one more year. We want you as a veteran presence. I wouldn't be shocked, but just because it's Green Bay. But, like, he hasn't been productive. We have seen him not on the same page with Rodgers a lot. And if the whole point of bringing in veterans is to be on the same page as Rodgers, well, Sammy Watkins did not work. Last one. Another free agent to be. This is my question. Okay, I did not include Aaron Rodgers on this list because his decision is his alone. I did not include David Bakhtiari in this list because I think they bring David Bakhtiari back. I don't think it's the question that a lot of people are making it out to be. His knee has proven fine. He had appendicitis. You don't blame a man for getting appendicitis and having emergency surgery. You just don't. So I think it's no question David Bakhtiari will be back. Maybe his contract will be altered. Sure, but he's coming back. The major question for me on the 2023 Green Bay Packer offense happens to be Alan Lazard. We know he's a free agent to be. We know that coming into this year, he was supposed to be the bona fide number one wide receiver while the rookies developed, and it just never happened. Yes, earlier in the year, he got stepped on. He had that ankle injury. There were, there were things that happened, right? But he just hasn't been that guy. He still blocks really well. He still does all of the dirty work. But if Alan Lazard is thinking that he is going to get paid like a number one, I don't think Green Bay can do it, and I don't think they will, no matter how much they appreciate and love the player he is. I think they'd look to retain him on a salary that's pretty close to what he's at in the $4 million, $5 million, $6 range. And if he's looking to be a $10, $12, $15 million receiver, I just don't think it's going to be in Green Bay anymore. Because if they do retain Cobb, well, then you've got Romeo, Watson, Cobb, Toure. And yeah, you lose a lot of your ability there to block at wide receiver, which could lend itself to maybe bringing back Sammy. Because he's he, Sammy is a very good blocker. But it's all going to come down for me as to what Lazard wants. And right now, I lean towards him not coming back. But I could see this going either way. It depends totally, in my opinion, what Lazard is going to ask for. I just don't know. I really don't, and I could see that one going either way. Much more so than any other person that I named on this list. The Keeps being Elton Jenkins, Randall Cobb, Jordan Love, Aaron Jones, the Gons, the See you the Robert Tunyon, the Sammy Watkins, and Mercedes Lewis. And then the big old question, Alan Lazard, does he want to come play with Watson and Dobbs and Toure, or is his career heading elsewhere? I think he's much more important to the Packers than he is elsewhere. So we'll see how this develops. But... That's it for today. Join me on Wednesday as I go through the same thing with the defense. There are certainly a couple surprises on the defense, and part of it will greatly depend on who's coaching the defense moving forward. So lots of questions. I'm going to be covering that on Wednesday. Then Friday, you can look forward to the game preview for Packers versus Rams. So thanks for joining me today on Lombardi Time Brews. As always, hit like, share, subscribe. Hope you are having a great day today. Hope you had a great weekend. And as always, Go Pack Go.